All right, this is a video on section 4.4 where we're going to be dealing with evaluating specific logarithms and we're also going to be looking at changing the base. Now, before we get really heavily into this section, the first thing I want you to notice is that we're going to be talking about two special case logarithms. One of them is the common logarithm and the second one is the natural logarithm. The common logarithm you notice here is the log base 10 of x. No longer are we gonna write it as log base 10 of x. From now on, we're gonna write this as just the log of x. The absence of a base tells me it's automatically a base of 10. So our first example here says to use a calculator to find the values of log of 10,000. So if you'll take a look at my calculator screen over here, um, I've typed in log of 10,000 and that gives me four. And then secondly, I'm looking for the log of 341. So I've typed in the log of 341. And by the way, the log button, if you'll look on the left hand column of buttons, the log button is over there on the left hand column. So the second one, I'm going to type in log of 341, and I get a very large, uh, long decimal, so 2.53, um, and then that decimal goes on forever. Um, and then the third one is going to be log of a decimal, and this guy is going to give me a negative value, a negative 1.1615, etc. Um, something to point out here, anytime my base of my log is greater than one. In this case, my base was a 10, so that's greater than one. Um, any base that's greater than one, when I take the log um, of a number between zero and one, so similar to this right here, I took the log of a number between zero and one, uh, my log is gonna be negative. However, if I take the log of a number greater than one, then the log value will be positive. Now let's talk about that second special logarithm, and that's gonna be the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm is where I have a base of E um, for my base. Notice that the way that um, we would have written it before this section would have been log base E of X, but we're not gonna write it like that anymore. From now on, anytime we want to work with log base E of X, we're gonna write that as ln of X. And then the way we read that is the natural log of X. So once again, um, it tells us to use our calculator to find the values of the following. So we've got um, this one I didn't type in um, previously. So look at your LN button, which is, again, over on the left-hand column. Um, you have LN of E. Well, that's going to be right up above the LN button to the fourth power. And that's going to give you four. Now that actually makes a lot of sense according to things that we've done um, in previous sections because my four could come out to the front and this is gonna be the same thing as four times natural log of E. Remember that the natural log of E is log base E of E. And we know that any time uh, these numbers are equal to each other, then my log is equal to one. So the natural log um, of, of uh, E is gonna be um, one. And so four times one then is equal to four. So that one didn't even really require a calculator. Um, for the second one, we have the natural log of 341. And that's going to be this five number, 5.83, et cetera. And then the last one um, is going to be the natural log of this decimal. So the natural log of 0 0.06894. And that's going to be a negative number, negative 2.67 number. All right, the change of base rule, this is for when we want to rewrite a logarithm with a different base for whatever reason. Maybe we don't like the base we're using. Um, this is mostly going to be used when I want to rewrite a log as either a common base or a natural base, a 10 base or an E base, because my calculator will do both of those bases. 
So um, notice that uh, number eight here, um, part A, says that we should use the change of base to find an approximation to four decimal places for each log. Well, we don't like a log base four, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the change of base formula. Notice that um, if I want to change from a base A to a base B, Again, our base B is probably going to be either the common or the natural base, a base of 10 or a base of E. Then we're going to do uh, the log of X divided by the log of A. All right, so just use this formula here. And um, I've got um, the first one written out. And so log base 4 of 20, I could either say this is going to be a log 20 over a log 4. That's the common common log. Or I could use the natural log and say it's the natural log of 20 over the natural log of 4. Now, I would suggest that you pause the video, type both of these into your calculator, and see what happens. Um, hopefully, you've paused the video and you're back now. And what ends up happening is that either way, you get the same decimal. It doesn't matter whether you use the common log um, for the numerator and denominator or whether you use the natural log. All right, for part B then, um, we're going to, once again, uh, change either to a common or a natural log. Plug that into the calculator, and we'll get negative 0 0.5146. Now, sometimes students will ask me, um, which one do you tend to choose? And here's how I decide. If there are any tens in my question, I'm definitely going to use the common logarithm. If there's any E's in my question, I'm going to use for sure the natural logarithm. If there are no 10s and there are no E's, then it's eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Pick the one you want. It doesn't really matter. All right, now let's look at some extra examples. And I believe at this point um, that I am finished with the calculator. So I'm going to just make that go away. So for some extra examples, um, this one's kind of interesting. It says, let u equal the natural log of a, let v equal the natural log of b. Rewrite each expression in terms of u and v without using the natural log function. Okay, so I gave you a little bit of a tip list here. Number one, let's just expand our logarithm. We did this back in a previous section, so let's expand our logarithm. Before I can expand, though, um, I'm going to take the top, and instead of writing it as a root, I'm going to write it as a fraction power. So that's going to be the natural log of a to the one-third power over b to the fourth. And now I can expand by using my quotient rule. So this was from the last section. If you forget the quotient rule, go back and watch the last video of the last section. And um, my quotient rule says that I'm going to break my log into two separate logs and combine them with subtraction. So that'll be natural log of a to the one-third minus the natural log of b to the fourth. Now, um, in that same last video, um, we used the power rule. So we're going to use the power rule here, or we can take our power out to the front. And so this is going to be one-third times the natural log of a minus four times the natural log of b. And here's where I can use what the directions are is asking for. So whenever I see a natural log of A, I'm going to replace or substitute with a U. When I see the natural log of B, I will substitute with a V. And so that's pretty simple to do in this very last step. I'll have one-third times U minus four times V. All right, the second extra example here um, says to use properties learned to evaluate the following. And I'm asked to evaluate two different functions. Um, so the first one here, the first little star, is to evaluate the uh, f of log base 3 of 2. So I'm going to take this, and everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in log base 3 of 2. And so the first thing I have here is this is going to be 3 raised to the I'm not going to write x, I'm going to write log base 3 of 2. Remember, there is a property that says if this base and this base match each other, remember they undo each other, and so this is going to just leave me with the value of 2. For the second function that I'm asked to evaluate, 
every time I see an X over here, I'm going to plug in log base 3 of 2 times the natural log of 3. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate. So we're going to have 3 raised to the all, whoops, I didn't mean to erase that, 3 raised to all of this, okay? Now, the first thing I notice is that this base and this base um, are equal to each other. So exponentials and logs undo each other. So that means that I'm only left with my 2 times the natural log of 3. Um, but I can clean this up a little further. I can use my power rule and make this back into a power. And that'll be natural log of 3 squared, which is then going to be the natural log of 9. All right, then there's um, a second example very similar to that, where um, this time um, I'm told that my function is log base 2 of x. And so for the first one, I want to substitute 2 to the 7th power in for my x's. So f of 2 to the 7th power is going to be log base 2 of 2 to the 7th power. And once again, when these two numbers are equal to each other, um, my log and my exponential, they're going to undo each other. So that's going to leave me with just a 7. For my second example, um, this time I'm asked to plug in a 2 raised to the 2 log base 2 of 2. Yes, I know there's a whole bunch of 2s in there. So when I see this x over here, let's plug in this value. And that's what I've got written right here. So we've got uh, log base 2 of, all right, instead of writing x, I'm going to be writing all of this right here. So the first thing that I notice is that this base and, uh-oh, let's try that again. This base here and this base here are equal to each other. So since they're equal to each other, they're going to undo each other, leaving me with just the power. All right, so let's leave ourselves with just the power, this piece right here. Well, now what I can do is I can say, oh, yeah, there's that rule that says when these two bases are equal to each other, then my logarithm is equal to 1. So for log base 2 of 2, I can replace that with the value of 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. All right, for the third extra example, um, I forgot to write the directions here. So here's the directions that I should have typed in. Number one, we're supposed to rewrite the function using our properties. And then after we do that, let's describe how the graph compares to the parent graph of the natural log of x. And remember, this is like saying the parent graph of log base e of x. But the, we just don't write it like that anymore. So first of all, we're going to rewrite. So let's use our quotient rule. So the quotient rule is going to be the natural log of x minus the natural log of e. Hey, log base e of e, this is going to equal 1. So we'll substitute 1 for the second term. And all of a sudden, this is as simple as I can make it. Um, I can't do anything else to that, so I've rewritten it using properties. So then number two, how does the graph compare to the parent? Well, I can tell that my natural log parent is going to be shifted down one unit.